Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Weekly 7 with me, your host, Monroe Mann. Seven news topics in seven quick minutes. Let's get started with the top story. Hey, what's up? It's Monroe Man. Before we get to that top story, just a reminder, if you like this channel and you like what I'm presenting here, please click subscribe, please click like, please write a comment. So the top story is Johnny Depp, and he's getting a lot of flack in the last few days because of some photos taken with some Russian fans where he kind of looks a little bit gaunt. Now, I love how everybody is making all of these judgments based on just a few photographs that were all taken around the same time and it looks like in the same type of area. Now, before everybody starts thinking that Johnny Depp is dying or Johnny Depp is sick or Johnny Depp is not eating well or he's become an anorexic, can you consider something? How many times have you gone into a bathroom at someone else's house or in a restaurant, you turn on the light, you look in the mirror, and oh my gosh, you look amazing, and you think, I am the most gorgeous person in the world. But then you get home, or you go to some other restaurant, or the next day, you, the same thing happens, you turn on the light, look in the mirror, and you look pretty horrible. Let me give you an example. So right now I have the lights on, everything looks really good. And you know, I, I look like a reasonably attractive guy. Let me show you what happens when we change the lighting just slightly. You see? Please guys, give Johnny Depp a break. Before you judge him, look at all of the evidence. That's what you need to do as a citizen attorney. Before you prosecute him as being sickly, drug infested, whatever, wait until you see some other photographs of him in other venues, in other scenarios, with different lighting, different makeup, different clothing. Do I know for a fact that he's not sick? No. But I will always give someone the benefit of the doubt, particularly when cameras and lighting are involved. Next story. For our world story, we are heading back to China. There's a video right now that's circulating around the internet, it's apparently got millions of views already, of a crayfish that was trying to escape a Chinese hot pot. Now, a Chinese hot pot, for those of you who have not lived there, is a very common type of eating experience in China. There's Korean barbecue, and then there's Chinese hot pot. Basically, hot pot is a huge boiling vat and you throw in foods that you want to be made hot, and you put them in the pot. Personally, I don't like eating hot pot because every single time I did when I was in Shanghai living there, I always left feeling hungry, but others absolutely love it. So apparently this crayfish so detested the thought of being eaten alive that it actually detached itself from its claw and scuttled away. And now all the users are commenting about how this gentleman who was about to eat this crayfish now keeps the crayfish as a pet. And I think it's just kind of weird. It's like, oh, I see. Keep the crayfish as a pet because it fought valiantly in the Battle Royal, in the Roman Colosseum. But all the others you're just going to throw in and eat. I'm not a vegetarian, but I just find that kind of odd that somehow this one earned the right to live. What are your thoughts? Last week, our friend Billy Bob, if that is his name, talked about Bulgaria and a place called Golden Sands in a city called Varna. Yeah, Golden Sands is a real place. It's a real resort on the beach in Bulgaria. I actually went there via Istanbul, Turkey. So I had some friends. I went to visit them in Istanbul. And then I got on a bus and went about, I think it was about six to eight hours north into Bulgaria. So yeah, Bulgaria is right north, basically, of Istanbul. I know most of you have not been to Bulgaria, but Neshtunovu, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to go. Varna, which is not the capital, the capital of Bulgaria is Sofia, but Varna is the place where people go. It's kind of like Russia's version of Miami, Florida. So Varna is a very beautiful beach city that has a European flair that's usually frequented by Russian, German tourists, Eastern Europeans. But I wanted to check it out and I went scuba diving in the Black Sea and it was fantastic. So I definitely think you should add Varna, Bulgaria 
to your list of destinations. Moving on to politics, I'm very excited to share that the Tappan Zee movement is moving towards a showdown in the New York Senate and the New York Assembly. So the Tappan Zee Bridge, which had its name for about seven years, was replaced by a new bridge, which the governor decided to name after his father. So now it's called the Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge. There are so many things wrong with it, but the most important is that why are not the Native Americans and the Dutch, the true founders of New York, the original immigrants, that Andrew Cuomo seems to keep talking about how he's an immigrant, he's an immigrant, he loves the immigrants, and yet he decides to take the name off of a bridge that honors the original Americans, the Tappan Indians, and the original settlers, the original immigrants, the first immigrants to New York, which were the Dutch. So anyway, this is very exciting because in the next two weeks, the New York Senate and the New York Assembly are going to vote on a compromise bill that would rename it the Governor Mario Cuomo Tappan Zee Bridge, which would keep the name on all of the signs saving the state probably close to a million dollars. But more importantly, it's going to honor the Indians and the Dutch who deserve to have their name on that bridge. So this showdown is happening in the next two weeks. And for commentary, I'd like to introduce Jorge from Mexico. Hola, I'm really happy to be here to be part of this showdown with Andrew Cuomo regarding the Tappan Zee Bridge. I think it's amazing what these guys are doing. The citizens are really just working so hard. That's all I have to say, but I will be there in the protest saying, no, no to the Cuomo, no Cuomo, no Nablo Cuomo. Ah, muy bien, adios. Muchos gracias, Jorge, muy bien, muy bien. Moving on to entertainment, I've got three quick stories for you. The first one is Simon Cowell from America's Got Talent, The X Factor fame, etc. Apparently, for the last 10 months, he has not used his cell phone. And he said it has liberated him so much. It was very difficult at first, but now he feels better. I can relate because about three years ago, I got rid of Facebook. And at first, that was very painful too. But I tell you, my life has been so much better, so much richer ever since I got off of it because now I am no longer tethered to this digital fake world of friends. Now I actually hang out with my friends. So I'm not saying you need to get off Facebook or get rid of your cell phone or drop Twitter, but really look at your social media habits and consider, as Simon Cowell did, as I did, maybe you're too entrenched. Try to pull yourself away, try to wean yourself off It'll be really good for your sanity and your well-being. The second quick story, there's a new horror film coming out called Hereditary, and apparently everybody, I mean everybody, is saying it's the most horrific, scary, thrilling film they've ever seen. I don't know, and I'm curious, what the heck could this be about? How could it be so, so amazing? Why are people saying it's the most amazing horror film ever done? I would say... Check it out and let's find out. And the last entertainment story, my YouTube channel almost has 200 subscribers. If you are liking what you're watching, and clearly you do because you're still here listening to me jabber away, will you please click like, will you please comment, and will you please press subscribe. The subscription is the most important part as I try to get to a thousand subscribers. Moving on to tech science, there is an ingredient in many toothpastes called triclosan, T-R-I-C-L-O-S-A-N. And it's been now linked to causing colitis and aggravating colon cancer, maybe even leading to colon cancer. Please look at the toothpastes that you are using and determine if there's triclosan in them. Two toothpastes that do not use triclosan, as far as I know, are Sensodyne and Crest. I'm sure there are many others. Just look at the ingredients list. Make sure you don't have triclosan because it's not worth the risk. And finally, the life skill for today, we're going to talk about investing. Now, everybody knows that investing in the stock market is a smart thing to do, and yet the vast majority of people don't even have any savings, let alone an investment account in the stock market. Well, there's a really great app. Now, their terms of service really sucks at tosfairness.org. You can read more about it. But I do use the app, and it is really helpful and handy. It just takes little bits of money out of every purchase you make and invests it into an index fund in the stock market. And now they just released the ability to start an IRA, both Roth, SCPs, and traditional IRAs, all right there in the app. It is so easy, it is so simple. If you haven't yet, 
please check it out. I've provided a link here. If you sign up, we both get $5 or something like that. The link is also down below in the information section. So please get started with investing in the stock market. Now is better than never. And before you know it, you will see, oh my gosh, how much money you have saved up and how much money you are, we hope, making from your investments. But that is our show for the week. I ask you to please subscribe if you love this stuff. Tell your friends, please share this with someone that you think might enjoy it. And stick around, watch the weekly seven comedy musical improv addendum where I write and sing right in my head, on the spot, totally ad-libbed, totally improv, seven songs based on these seven stories. Catch you next time. Bye. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs>